Now on the YouTube, I'm the Toff Man. Welcome to uh, this little update on the England team. Fuck me, I just can't get comfortable. Oh, there we are. Right. Well, this little update is about the uh, England team that's been chosen to represent us in Euro 2012 and about Kenny Dalglish's recent sacking, which I'm going to get to. That's, that's after the England, because that's just the way around I want to do it. I've got in front of me here the team that is the England, you know, 2012 team. Um, goalkeeping positions, Joe Hart, Rob Green and uh, John Ruddy. In defence you've got Baines, Cale, Cole, Glenn Johnson, uh, Phil Jones, Julian Lescott and uh, John Terry. In midfield, quite a long list this one, Barry, Downing, Gerrard, Lampard, Milner, Oxlade, Chamberlain, Parker, Walcott and Young. And strikers Carol, Defoe, Rooney, and Welbeck. And on standby is Butland, Jackie Elka, Henderson, uh, Adam Johnson, and Sturridge. Okay, so. Firstly, I'd like to just run through the team as I see. Um, well, as I see fit. There's Joe Hart, you know, without a doubt, the best goalkeeper in the Premiership. That is, you know, nobody comes near him. In, in my personal opinion, nobody comes near Joe Hart, okay? Rob Green, he's not even in the Premier League, okay? He, um, well, not at the minute, he's not, anyway. I don't know what's going to happen with West Ham. It is, it is West Ham who we're placed for, isn't it? I'm not being an idiot about that. Um, and then John Ruddy, who, uh, I think, is he Norwich's goalkeeper? I'm sure he plays for Norwich. Um, and he's had a good season, you know, he's, he's had a good season. That good that he's been called up for England. And, uh, and you know, what, a, what an honour. For, for any kind of player to uh, be called up for their uh, national team. Uh, he might not get a game, but that's not the point. You know, he's been recognised, and that's, you know, that's going to give him a lot of confidence, I'm sure, going into next season as well. Defence looks a little bit small to me, and um, I'm going to go just into what I think um, should have happened. Okay? I think that in defence we've got Leighton Baines, which is obviously a backup for, for Joe Cole. Okay? We've got the uh, Kale and Terry partnership in the middle. That's the partnership that I wanted. And then you've got Glenn Johnson on the right there. But Glenn Johnson sometimes is prone to having good games sometimes and sometimes having some shocking games, right? I can't understand by looking at this why Mika Richards is not there. I really, really do rate Mika Richards. And I can't understand why uh, the likes of Phil Jones and Jolie and Lescott have got into the team above Mika Richards. I'm looking at it and thinking maybe it's because Phil Jones and Jolie and Lescott can, you know, diversify their role. I know Phil Jones can do right back as well, um, possibly not as good as centre back, but he can do it. And Phil Jones can also bomb up that right hand side and you whip some killer balls in some side. I mean, look at the one that uh, he whipped into Rooney and. Uh, and Rooney, uh, did he score that one at the weekend? I'm sure he did. I'm sure he scored that that goal. And that was a brilliant ball, you know, for a for a defender. It's fucking brilliant. But I just I don't understand why Lescott's there um, above Richards. You got Phil Jones there who can come in as centre back, uh, back up centre back, um, and that's about it. Maybe that's why Lescott's there as well. It really is a small defence. Which leads me on to the midfield, Barry, Downing, Gerrard, Lampard, Milner, Oxlade, Chamberlain, Parker, Walcott and Young. Uh, just before I move on to the midfield actually, I want to just touch on something else in the defence. Is uh, Rio Ferdinand, and Rio Ferdinand's not been called up. And I think Roy, Roy Hudson's uh, got it spot on there. I don't think that this type of tournament, the speed of the players that are, are up front is suited at all to Rio Ferdinand. He's got a lot slower over the last few seasons, you can see that. And also, not only has he got like that, that niggling back problem, I know he's come back, but he's still he's getting on. I think he's passed it now in terms of international football and the the uh, the toughness of what it is, you know, at the centre back role. I know he's good at centre back. There's a reason why Alex Ferguson keeps putting him there as a centre back. But I don't think that international football is his forte anymore. I think he's definitely passed it for that. You feel free to disagree with me. Feel free to disagree with me. Put it in the comments below. I know 
I'll try and defend myself where I can because I, d I think that uh, that uh, Roy Nobson has you know done the right call there. Midfield, like I said, Barry Downing, Gerard Milner, uh, Lampard, Oxley, Chamberlain, Parker, Walcott, and Young. I wouldn't personally, right? Looking at this, I wouldn't have taken Parker. In fact, I would have taken Adam Johnson rather than Parker. There's a reason for this. Is if you look at this team here, I know you've got Walcott and you've got Milner. I think Milner's more of a central midfield kind of player. But obviously you've got Steve G and Frank Lampard there. So maybe he will push Milner out on the right wing and, and Walcott. Looking at this team and looking at the amount of midfielders that are there, I'm disappointed. Because I can see it now. I can see what formation it's going to be. It's going to be a 4-5-1, especially for those two first games. And I can see it just by looking at this um, team sheet. Because there's only four strikers and one of them's banned. Okay? You've got, then, you've got Carol Defoe and Welbeck up front. But I'm going to get to that in a minute. Gareth, I think the holding midfield role, which will be done by two people... Looking at this, it will be done by two people. And I'm calling this now, I think, personally, it will be Barry and Milner who will be doing the holding midfield roles. Looking at this, that's what I may think. It could well be Barry and Gerard, because I know Gerard's quite good in that holding midfield road, uh, road role. Um, on the left, we've got two players there, Young and Downing. Uh, I think Young will obviously get the nod ahead of, of Downing because Downing's had a shocking season and it just shows you what, what crap we've got uh, for left mid. Apart from, you know, Young, he's, he's been brilliant, so no, good on him for getting in there. And Oxlade Chamberlain as well. And he actually said that he was shocked at being called up. I'm not shocked at all. I'm not shocked one bit. I'm happy that Roy Hodgson has looked at it and seen, you know, this guy can change games sometimes when he comes on. This guy's got some pace. He's got some creativity. The one of the few the, the few matches that I've watched of Arsenal is that Oxlade Chamberlain's been there. I remember one of them, and I'm, I think it was it against Man United, or was it against Chelsea? I don't know, I'm sure it was a big match and Oxlade Chamberlain came out. I can't remember actually, but Oxlade Chamberlain was there. And then Alex, you know, uh, Alex Ferguson, fucking knobhead. Um, Arsene Wenger brought Oxlade Chamberlain on. You know, even Van Persie was shocked. Well, why have you taken him out? He's had a storming game, crowds going like we were fucking mad. This was when Arsenal was having, going through a bad period. That game, he was fantastic. Now, if he, if he can pull performances out like that, especially in the World Cup, Jesus, uh, the European Cup, then, uh, you know, just watch out for him in the future. Because I reckon, give him the game time, give him the experience in this tournament, he will be outstanding in the World Cup. That's my, my, my opinion. Always, if you disagree with me, put it in the comments. Stevie, uh, Stevie G and Frank Lampard there. Stevie G's got the captaincy. Brilliant. I think that uh, he definitely does deserve it over John Terry. Personal opinion. It's not just because I prefer... Uh, um, it's not just because I support Liverpool. It's not because of that at all. I think that John Terry, as good as he is, a footballer, you've got to give the captaincy to somebody who, you know, is a model captain. And John Terry's not a model captain, in my opinion. Not after everything what happened. And I know Stevie G's no sin for what he's done in the past. But, you know, I reckon that, that Stevie G's definitely earned it. Um, Scott Parker is injured. He is injured. I don't understand why Scott Parker's there. He's nursing this Achilles problem. Why, why have they brought him? He's a good player, don't get me wrong. And he's brilliant in that holding role. And he's done outstanding there all season. And maybe uh, Roy Nobson thinks that, that Parker might be fit, might not be fit. It's all this like Wayne Rooney broken toe business from yesteryear. And uh, look how shit that Wayne Rooney was when it came on. Walcott, eventually this guy, fingers crossed, we haven't got there yet, it's another half month away, but fingers crossed, you know, this guy gets in his first tournament and actually manages to start playing. I'm sure it's his first tournament because, of course, he got that debacle for the World Cup that uh, Sven Goran Bloody Nobson, yeah, there's another one, um, him, brought him along, then decided not to play him, right, okay, 
the following season, I think he was injured. I'm not uh, the following tournament. I think he was injured. I'm not quite sure on that. So you know, for, just forget about that one. Then the World Cup, it was never even taken by Fabio Capello. Mistake in my opinion. Uh, and now this one has been named, and thank fuck for that. Now we're going to move on to the strikers. Um, Carol, Defoe, Rooney, and Welbeck. Rooney's uh, obviously banned for the, the, the first two group matches, okay? So that we're down to Carroll, Defoe, and, and Welbeck, okay? But looking at this, Welbeck, brilliant. I think he should be in that first, that first 11. Because he, out of all these, he's the one that's been the, playing the best and playing the most, okay? Carroll, what the fuck, right? What the fuck? Does his record not speak volumes for you, Roy Nobson? Come on, fella. Come on. Come on. Five-star skill moves. Five... Fuck off. He can't even hit the fucking barn door, for fuck's sake. Then you've got Jermaine Defoe, who's the second fucking, you know, backup-like striker for Tottenham. And uh, you have to excuse me, because I don't actually follow what Tottenham do at all. I'm not a Tottenham bloke. I don't... I don't look at Tottenham. I, you know, I don't pretend to follow them. I don't pretend to know what they do. But I do know that I'm sure Jermaine Defoe is a little bit down the pecking order. You can correct me, and I apologise if I'm wrong on that one. Okay. I looking at this, I do not understand why Ryan Robson has not brought Peter Crouch. Peter fucking Crouch. The guy is massive. There's Defenders that hate defending against somebody that's that fucking tall and that's that good in the air, right? Maybe maybe Andy Carroll is a lot better with his feet, marginally better with his feet, in my opinion. But maybe he is. Maybe he is a similar kind of player towards uh, than Peter Crouch. But look at their past. I don't know this without actually going to have a look, and I'm going to double check this and and probably put some it in the comments. Uh, the uh, uh, description underneath this video, but I think that that uh, Peter Crouch has scored more goals this season than than Andy Carroll has, and and I'm willing to go out on a limb here and say that that Crouch and Carroll have played a similar amount of games. I could be wrong, okay? I could be wrong. Look at Crouch's international past. Look at how many games he's played. Look at how many goals he's scored, and tell me why the fuck Peter Crouch isn't in that team instead of Andy Bastard Carroll. Just my opinion. Feel free to disagree with me, put it in the comments below. Um, I would have taken Sturridge rather than Defoe, my personal opinion. Put it in the comments if you, agree, if you disagree with that as well. Um, and I don't think there's anything else left to talk about with that one. Uh, if you've got a point to put across, then definitely get it in the comments. I keep saying this. Get it in the comments. You know, if you could stick a like on this video and uh, you know tell people about it so we can all have a, a good discussion about this because I think that Euro 2012 is going to be one of the worst displays that England are ever going to put across over the World Cup as well. I fully think that that is going to be the case. I would have liked to have seen a lot more younger players in here than what there is, to be quite honest. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking... It's the World Cup team. What's the fucking point? What, have we not learned from the past? Have we not learned that this team does not fucking perform? Have we not learned this? Why? Why is it that uh, Adam Johnson's not there? Why is it that Sturridge is not there when he's an up-and-coming striker? You look at the, the front four, one of them's banned, and I could just see Andy Carroll being left up there by himself, 4-5-1, you know, Young and uh, Walcott are meant to be going down their wings to make it 4-3-3. I can't see goals coming from Walcott or Young. And they are good players, don't get me wrong. But I cannot see goals coming from them two. And I certainly can't see any goals coming from Andy Carroll. So that leaves a lot of pressure on that back four to do their job. I trust Joe Hart in goal, okay? He's not going to pull a Rob Green. I, I'm probably, I might shoot myself in the foot by saying that and he could you know, spill it, spill it behind his own net, but you never know. And uh, the back four, apart from Kale, who I fully believe will start in the centre, apart from that, it's pretty much the same fucking team, looking at it. Pretty much the same team. I'm disappointed that, that they've not learned from the past. 
Maybe Roy Nobson thinks he can pull some out of this team that, uh, that, that Fabio Capello couldn't. I don't think so. Just look at what he did to Liverpool. That's all I'm going to say, okay? But anyway, that's the England team. I'm not going to go into that anymore. I'm going to talk a bit about Liverpool now. So if you're not interested in Liverpool, now would be a time just to uh, listen in the background while you write your comment down about the England game, okay? I'm going to move on to Liverpool. And uh, Kenny Dalglish being sacked uh, today, just earlier today, I've got uh, a phone call from a cousin. He goes, hey, yeah, that's, hey that's what he said. I answered the phone, now then, because I do that. Now then, he says, you heard the news? I went, no, why? He said, oh, Kenny Dalglish has been sacked. And I said, I'm not surprised. Now, he might have won a bit of silverware, okay? It's the Carling Cup. It's not to get excited about, right? It's the Carling Cup, not to get excited about. It's still a cup at the end of the day, but when you put it into the grand scheme of things, do you really think that players, you know, world-class players, are going to look and go, oh, look, they won the Carling Cup. Let's go to, you know, let's go to this team. They look pretty decent. We finished eighth in the Premier League. Our worst one since the 1950s, or something we were saying. Our worst finish, right, since the, you know, the 1950s. Uh, the, the main thing that players look at to you know, think about moving there and moving to a team is where they are in the league, with what kind of competitions they've qualified for, what they're going to be playing in next season, because, of course... Every footballer wants to be on the best stage possible, okay? So they're going to be looking at that. But they're going to look back and they're going to see what type of players they've bought, whether they're going forwards, whether they're going backwards. And that is why they've sacked um, Kenny Dalglish. Because if FSG, when, you know, when we finished eighth in the league, and only, you know, we got, you know, we got quite far in the FA Cup as well, granted, We'd, we lost in the final though, we didn't get the cup, but we were there. Um, they're the only two positive bits and positive spins that you can take on it. So FSG have sat back to themselves and thought, you know, we could be in trouble here if we can't get these people in and we can't show that this club is trying to change for the better, then, uh, you know, they're going to stand to lose a lot of money and they're going to stand to continue losing a lot of money. Bad signings, in my opinion, that's what's done it. I thought, much like everybody else, that Stuart Downing would have been a, a wonderful signing. Bag of shit. He really has been, turned out to be a bag of crap. I don't know what he, I don't know what they fed him at Aston Villa, but they must be giving him gruel or something over here because it's just not doing, it's just not doing his job. So that's why I think FSG have sacked Kenny Dalglish because they know that the Globe, because it is a world football team, you know, worldwide known. You know, and uh, they're going to be looking to see what happens next. And if FSG don't act, they leave Kenny Dalglish in charge, then people will think to themselves, well, they're not that serious about trying to change. They're not that serious about trying to get back up the leaderboard. And that's why they've uh, put their hand in the pockets and said, you've done, a, you've done an all right job here, Kenny Dalglish, but we're going to have to ask you to leave. We need, we need change. Now, moving on from that, okay... Kenny Dalglish is a legend, he always will be a legend, he's just, he's not done well this season, he's not done well this season, and uh, they, uh, they sacked Roy Nobson for, for being shit, so why not with Kenny Dalglish, and it may be some back kind of backlash from the fans, there'll be no backlash from me, because if a, ma if a manager's not doing his job, then you should get rid of him, much like um, guy who shits on the sideline for Chelsea. Much like him. Not doing his job, not getting the results he needs, too busy having craps on the, the white line at the side. You know, the whole of Britain are watching this guy crouch down with, you know, on, his, on, his, on the balls of his feet, right, having a shirt. And that's just not professional, in my opinion. Um, Abramovich says to himself, Hey, um, I'm trying to do a Russian accent, but it, it, it's shit, so I'm going to move on from that. Let me move on to the next Liverpool manager, right? Um, who is it going to be? The media, they're all over it. They're saying that Roberto Martinez from Wigan is going to be the next one. Bullshit, in my opinion. The favourite never gets the job. 
the favourite never gets the fucking job. Look at uh, what happened with the FA in England. Favourite, Harry Redknapp, Roy Hodgson comes along. Well, fuck me, what have they done? Just scrape the bottom of the barrel or something? Uh, or they just spoke to Redknapp and <laughs> Redknapp was like, I fucking hell, I ain't touching that poison chalice. Um, so yeah, the next Liverpool manager. Me personally, I want to see Benitez back. And uh, I've got to put my hands up and say that I was one of the first people that when Liverpool started that decline, back, way back when, um, selling Mascherano, selling Alonso, you know, all that kind of business. When this, you know, I was one of the first people to say, get rid of Benitez, he's sh doing shit, it's time for a change, okay? I was one of them first people. But look who had control in, in Liverpool at that stage, right? And uh, it fucking knobheads, I forget the name, because I don't want to remember them. The fucking, the little guy looks like a fucking mole. That cunt, and the the other guy, who a big fucking Texan bloke, with fucking hat and bald head. You know what I mean? Uh, them two. So, that's who Benitez had to work with. There was conflicts, there was all this bullshit, then Benitez ended up going, right? And I thought, brilliant, that's the best thing it could have. Roy Hudson comes, oh, fuck's sake. Fuck me, what are you doing? And then Dalglish comes in, yeah, everything's still shit, you know what I mean? Benitez, I think, would come in and uh, with the money, with the resources, with the stuff that he's got on hand now that he never had to start with, with the money that he's got uh, to hand, uh, I reckon he could do something with the team. Everybody already knows him, he's a popular figure. I, I, I'd be for Benitez coming back and I wouldn't rule it out, I really wouldn't rule it out. As far as I'm aware, Benitez doesn't have a job either, he's, uh, he's signed on job seekers, last time I knew. And uh, he's always, you know, he was there for the Hillsborough. He's always, you know, saying about Liverpool and how he'd love to return uh, to English football, all this kind of stuff. Much like Jose, Jose um, Mourinho, whatever his name is, uh, he says he wants to come back. But you know, let me know what you think in the comments. Now you could actually go and say that Benitez did spend a lot of money on his on his uh, signings. He did spend a lot of money on this. He, he, he shelled money out for the, this person, he shelled money out for that person. You can say that, but every manager does the same thing. Every manager does the same thing. Now, if we can go out and spend 35 million on Andy Carroll, what is Benitez going to get for 35 million? You know what I mean? Lucas, look how crap he was at the start. And he's just started to get better, and then uh, he does his knee. Uh, knees, knee, knees, knee. No, it's one knee, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and then he does his knee and is out for the fucking season, he's going to come back, he's going to be a bit rusty, and then all the fucking you know, hard work tries to start again. I reckon we missed him a lot this season, cleaning up like that fucking back end for us. As always, you know, let me know what you think in the comments section, and uh, I swear to God, I'm going to try and look at everybody's comments, but you know, videos like these typically do get quite a few comments, and I... I see a lot of people talking amongst themselves. I love it. I love it when people start talking to each other through my comments. I like to think that I've got a hand in bringing some people together so we could all have a good discussion about it. That's why I say, if you could please like the video, it helps me out a ton. And it also, you know, it spreads my video around. And people will, say, people will see it. If you like it, right, and you have, I don't know, 60,000 subscribers, or 60,000, fuck me, that'd be amazing. If you had 60 subscribers, okay, you went out and liked a video, and your 60 subscribers are then going to see that, they might not know about me, okay, they're going to see that, they're going to see me talking about the Liverpool, talking about the uh, England football team, they might then jump in and give their two pennies worth, and I want that kind of diversity, I want loads of people talking about different kinds of stuff, you know, on there, and all having a, a chat amongst themselves, and having a good fucking gin wag about, get a cup of tea, sit there with a cup of tea, ten minutes, just start fucking talking to people, a cup of tea, fucking brilliant, that's what I do, I sit there for ten minutes, you know, fucking do that, fucking typing and stuff, a cup of tea, uh, fuck, yeah. you know what I mean, it just, it does massively help me a lot, and um you're all fucking legends, in my opinion. Anybody who watches this, you're a fucking legend. Even if you dislike it, please don't. But even if you did, you're still a fucking legend. 
for, for watching my video in the first place because that also helps me so anyway guys I'm, I'm babbling now so I'm gonna fuck off I'm gonna get a cup of tea myself and uh, I'm gonna sit down and I'm probably gonna render some videos that I've got going um, tomorrow is Thursday and tomorrow is gonna be much like Monday uh, I'm going to try my hardest tonight to get the videos I want uploaded tomorrow, uploaded now, and then, you know, they're going to be released at whatever time it is tomorrow. I'm going to try my hardest to do that, okay? I'm going to be out for most of the day tomorrow. I'm going to be in no mood when I come back to, uh, to do anything. So, I'm going to see you guys. The next kind of recording I'm going to do is later on tonight, but the other kind of recording is going to be on, uh, on Friday. And there is no pro clubs on Friday, by the way. I, I'm currently thinking about not even bothering with pro clubs at the minute because I've got that much stuff going on and uh, there's a reason for that. I'm going to go into it really, really quickly because I know this video is going quite long now. Pro clubs, okay? The thing is, I could put out a video saying, uh, I've got a space open in my pro clubs, I want somebody to fill it. I could get hundreds and hundreds of people that will turn around and say, I've, you know, I play this position, who pick me, pick me, pick me, fucking, you know, all this bullshit, right? And I love it, right? Brilliant. You're all legends, in my opinion, for wanting to be part of the team. But what happens is, when, uh, pardon me, it's a cup of tea, that, when, when the person is picked, Nobody is then interested in pro clubs. They, they're not interested in watching pro clubs because they're not part of it. And that's, that, that's the thing that I'm seeing. So all this effort that we go into um, playing games and what Rodin goes into recording them, the views aren't coming across, the subscribers aren't coming across for, for Rodin, who's doing all this hard work you know, in his own time on my behalf. Um, and all this kind of hard work is really going to waste, and I don't think that that that, that is, is good in the long run. So I'm really looking at it and thinking it's probably a good idea to knock the pro clubs on the head. And there will probably be something that fills its place, because of course there was the effort there in the first place, so I can always put the effort into something else. There may be something there, I might do like a... Uh, a play the subscribers series, I might do a, a, a an online game kind of series, I'm not quite sure. Uh, if you've got any suggestions, put them in the comments and I'll take a look without doubt. Anyway guys, I'm going to go now, I'm going to grab myself another cup of tea, because, uh, well no, I don't drink tea. What the fuck am I going on about it's tea for? It's coffee. Right, I'm off to get a, a cup of coffee. And uh, like I said, put your comments in the description. Uh, no, don't, don't do that, because you can't. But put your comments in the comments section and I will try my best to get to them. Uh, I will see you guys for whenever the next video is. Goodbye. Bye.